Hello and welcome to Garden of Luma where I provide you with tips for growing edibles in hot climates. Hello everybody, Joe here with Garden of Luma. If you guys are new to this channel, please subscribe to stay updated and support my channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about cold protecting, frost protecting those sensitive tropical fruit trees that you may have in your yard. I am in the Phoenix, Arizona area growing zone 9B. If you guys have watched some of my videos throughout the winter, I've been bragging about how easy it's been, how I have been lazy and not frost protected anything this winter. Well, it is the first week in February, and as I've been watching the weather forecast, we've been cruising along this winter, and lo and behold, a couple days from now, it's supposed to drop to a low of 27. So that is definitely cause for concern. I am getting the frost structures up. And what I'm gonna frost protect is specifically my mango trees that are in the ground, as well as my sapodilla tree. Most of my fruit trees that are sensitive are in pots. Those I'm just gonna shift in the house, in the garage, and won't have to worry about anything there. But for my sensitive stuff in the ground, I am definitely gonna get the frost protection up and show you a little bit about what I'm doing, how I'm doing that in this video today. Today, it's like a beautiful 80 degree day, one of the warmest days of the year so far, and then tomorrow it's supposed to drop to a high of 50 with a low of 30. So that's crazy. Uh, all the fruit trees right now are thinking it's spring, they're starting to bud out, leaf out, start flushing growth, and then we're just gonna get hit with this cold frost and put them into a shock. Like I said, the mangoes, the sapodilla, I'm gonna protect. Guavas, I'm gonna leave out here. I have some in-ground guavas. I'm not gonna do anything with those. Adamoya, I've been growing from seed. I'm not gonna do anything with that. So we're gonna see what happens with some of those. I know they'll definitely take a hit, but I think that they'll all survive and push through it. So let's go take a look and talk a little bit more about these frost protection methods that I'm gonna be using. Here's my Tikal Sapodilla, and this is what I typically do to frost protect my tropical fruit trees that are sensitive to frost here, is I just use this six mil painter's plastic here, and then these four wooden stakes. I buy, they're one by twos by eight feet that you can get at Home Depot. They're only about a buck 20 a piece, so really cheap, and then I just cut off the ends to make a point so they stake into the ground easy and just hammer them down into the ground and you can cut these back to size if you need to cut them a little bit shorter as well really simple just four stakes around the tree I make sure to keep this plastic off of the leaves of the tree here because they can do damage if the leaves are pressed up against this plastic and it gets too cold so keep it somewhat off the tree and that is pretty much it. And then I put a heat source in the bottom at night. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different for my mangoes that I'll show you here now. Okay, so here's the exterior. How my frost structure here is set up. You can see there's my tallest mango popping up the top there. And I have these logs along here, along the base to hold the plastic down to seal in the warm air at night. And I just use some of these clips here to hold the plastic to these wooden stakes. Or I'll use staples, my staple gun, and just staple them on here as well. Okay, so here's what it looks like here from one of the open ends here. You can see the plastic here hanging on the ground. I will pick that up there and seal it on this stake. But here's what it looks like when it's open from the end of it. You can see the mango trees in there. So I'm just creating like a little mini greenhouse here basically. All right, so here's the finished product, what it looks like, my makeshift greenhouse frost protection thing here. You can see I put as much sheets up here as I can, old bed sheets and stuff up top, and then I will open this up today to let air flow in here. You don't wanna keep the tops on and trap all the air when it warms up during the day, because that can cause damage to the plants as well. So I just open up some of these sides to let the air flow in throughout the day, put it back on the evening. You can see it kind of glowing there right now. 
So what I have in here, let me come around here. Well, that's not good. One of the sheets fell here and left this exposed, but when I stick my hand in here, I can feel it is slightly warmer in here. So that's good. That's all you really want is just to keep it, you know, a few degrees above freezing. Your goal isn't to keep it like super hot in here or anything. It's just to keep it above freezing. You can see down below there I have two of those ceramic heaters in there. And I keep it on the low setting, which is <clears throat> 900 watts. And then there's a heat lamp in the middle. Down at the other end, end is the other ceramic heater. The heat lamp is 500 watts there. So when you use these heaters, to use them at your own risk, they do get extremely hot. They are a fire hazard if anything comes up against those. So just be mindful, use those at your own risk and be cautious about those heaters and heat lamps and things you might be using underneath. I use them sparingly only on the really cold nights, so just a few times a year when I have to. And even then, I, I'm praying at night that nothing happens, so just be mindful.